let us take up another very very important question lot many times this question has been asked in examination so question number 15 it says the risk free rate of return that is rf is 9% expected rate of return on market portfolio rm is 13% the expected rate of growth for the dividend of platinum limited is 7% the last dividend paid on equity stock of platinum limited was rupees 2 the beta of platinum limited's equity stock is 1.2 what is the equilibrium price of the equity stock of platinum limited now this time they have emphasized on calculation of equilibrium price so uh, let us see are we in a position to determine that equilibrium price without any problem rf is given rm is given beta is given so rf rm and beta is enough information for computing the expected rate of return as per capm now what they have given you the current dividend correct so this is d0 we will add growth rate to this to arrive at d1 and because the growth rate is given we will simply use the formula that is p0 equals to d1 divided by ke minus g and the K will be determined as per CAPM which is easily determinable. So as far as the first part of the question is concerned there is no hassle in solving it. Coming to the second part of the question it says how would the equilibrium price change when inflation premium increases by 2% expected growth rate increases by 3% and beta of platinum limited equity rises to 1.3. So we are going to give cumulative effect of these three changes on the equilibrium price and special care will be taken while dealing with inflation premium because this is going to impact your risk free rate how it impacts we will understand that point when we reach that part as of now let me quickly take you to the solution of the first part which is straight and simple so calculation of expected rate of return that is ke as per capm so we write the CAPM equation, we define all the variables, I do not have to explain you this thing again and again, this is straight information available in the question. So we just define all the variables along with their respective values and then substitute the values in the CAPM equation and obtain KE as 13.8 percent. Let us move forward and use the perpetual growth model that is p0 equals to d1 divided by ke minus g and in this perpetual growth model or dividend growth model if we try to define the variables p0 will be the equilibrium price of the share d1 is the dividend receivable by year end now current year dividend was basically 2 this was d0 and the growth rate is given as 7 percent so growth rate added to the dividend at current time it will make it as expected dividend receivable by year end that comes to 2.14 and ke is the expected rate of return by the shareholders which we have obtained through capm as 13.8 percent and growth rate is already informed as 7 percent we substitute these values in the p0 formula and we get 31.47 per share as the equilibrium price now we move to the next part of the question and here new equilibrium price after considering the following and what are the changes that we have to consider inflation premium increases by 2 percent expected growth rate increases by 3 percent and beta of platinum limited equity rises to 1.3 so let us see the impact of each of these first thing first when they say inflation premium increases by 2 percent how will it impact it will basically impact the risk free rate risk free rate was originally 9 percent and now because of inflation adjustment you will add 2 percent to that be careful over here do not apply absolute calculation of 9 plus 2 equals to 11 in fact it will be 9 percent plus 2 percent of 9 percent and that comes to 9.18 percent beta value has been revised to 1.3 and growth rate will be increased by 3 percent when it comes to growth rate you are definitely going to consider on absolute basis 
that is 7 plus 3 that is 10 percent with these changes you put up the new ke and new ke comes to 14.146 percent and substituting this value you revise the equilibrium price the new equilibrium price or p0 would come to 2.2 divided by 0.04146 and that comes to rupees 53.06 per share Nikhil sir, please wait. I have a doubt. Don't worry dear, just tell me, what's the doubt? When growth rate increases by 3%, you are adding that rate to the existing growth rate on absolute basis. But when inflation rate is given as 2%, that rate you are adding on 9%, not on absolute basis, but as 2% of 9%. Why so? Please explain. Well, this is a very commonly asked doubt by many students. That sir, inflation premium is given as uh, 2%. So, you are adding 2% on 9%. That is 9 plus 2% of 9. That will become 0.18. So, 9 plus 0 0.18 is 9.18 percent, fine. But when it comes to growth rate, when the question says growth rate increases by 3 percent, why are you adding that 3 percent on that absolute percentage as an absolute value that is 7 plus 3 becoming simply 10 percent? Why is that so? Now, friends, first of all, when I say growth rate increases, growth rate will always have an impact on the volume, profitability, all the aspects and that is why it is always considered on absolute basis. So, growth rate will always be increased or decreased on absolute basis. However, notice one thing, they did not say that risk free rate increases by 2 percent, understand the point. If I say growth rate increases by 3 percent, what was 7 now becomes 10. If I say risk free rate will increase by 2 percent, then what was 9 would have become 11. But here they did not directly mention risk free rate increases by 2 percent. They have given the inflation premium as 2 percent. That means rate of inflation can have a little impact on the risk free rate and what I will do is. I will explain this whole point through a very very nice example and just try to understand this example very well. I am not going to give you additional time to note down this example. If you want to note down this example at end of it just pause the video and note that example. So just try to follow this example over here. In this example we are assuming that suppose you want to buy a laptop and there is a particular model available that is model A and now we have another model available that is model B. Model B is little top end model and has a little higher price. The difference in the price between model A and model B is rupees 10,000. Model A is priced as 1 lakh, model B is priced as 1 lakh 10,000. Price difference is 10,000. The point is how much money you have in your pocket today? You have rupees 1 lakh today. That means you have sufficient money to buy model A only. You cannot afford to buy model B in today's terms. So, you can buy model A today itself. Alternatively, if you are keen on buying model B, you will have to invest your money and wait until the money grows to 1 lakh 10,000. So, we would say alternatively you can invest rupees 1 lakh today at real interest rate of 10 percent per annum and wait for one year to buy model B. Now, what is the significance of this real interest rate? This term real interest rate indicates pure interest rate which is not influenced by inflation. So, if this thing is workable and if you can postpone your laptop purchase by one year then only this is possible, correct? If suppose you have some urgent work with your laptop and you cannot wait for one year, 
you have no choice but to buy model A only. Anyway, this is an alternative available and assuming that you can manage to you know postpone your asset purchase by one year then this is doable definitely. However, inflation rate is 6% per annum. Therefore, simply earning only 10% will not be enough. Now, let me explain what exactly I am trying to put forward over here. There is requirement of pure interest rate of 10%. When I say pure interest rate or real interest rate, I told you it is not influenced by inflation. So, 1 lakh rupees that you have today, if you invest it at pure interest rate of just 10% per annum, it will become 1 lakh 10,000. Assuming no inflation, then you will be able to buy that laptop at 1 lakh 10,000, that is model B. But you are aware of the fact that in India, the average inflation rate is around 6% and you will have to factor that. So, suppose you get an investment opportunity to invest your money that is 1 lakh of today and arrive at some future value and you want not model A because model A is buyable today itself. You want to buy model B and that is why you are doing all this adjustment. But if there is inflation information, today model B is available for 1 lakh 10,000 after one year it won't be available for 1 lakh 10,000 it will be priced little higher because of inflation so you will have to manage to earn more than that because pure interest rate can just give you that laptop as model B after one year without considering inflation but because there is inflation the purchasing power of money is going to get reduced and the prices of the products are going to increase so, what would be the expected price of model A after one year? 1 lakh plus 6 percent, that would be 1 lakh 6000. What would be the expected price of model B after one year? 1 lakh 10,000 of today plus 6 percent, whatever it comes, you can check on your calculator, that would be the price after one year for model B. So, you are aware of one thing that because there is inflation prevailing in the market, you cannot just manage to obtain laptop model B after one year by just investing your money at 10 percent per annum, you will have to earn more. The question arises how much more you will have to earn, let us try to figure out even that. So, I told you if you are interested to note down this example, you can pause the video right away and note down this example. If you are not willing to write, let us just move ahead and discuss further. With 6 percent inflation, the product prices after one year will be for model A, it will be 1 lakh 6000 and for model B, it comes to 1 lakh 16600. Once we identify these expected prices after one year, we have to target arrangement of 1 lakh 16600 after one year. So, what is needed? Monetary value of future cash flow will be you can just arrive at the amount invested today that is principal invested is rupees 1 lakh. If the pure interest rate or real interest rate is 10 percent per annum, the interest that you will earn will be 10,000 and the future value on real interest basis will be 1 lakh 10,000. Add inflation adjustment at 6 percent. So, you will add 6 percent effect on 1 lakh 10,000 and that would give you 6,600. That is why the total monetary value that you need to have after one year to buy model B laptop which will be priced at 1,16,600 should be the monetary value of 1,16,600. So, effectively the rate of return that you need to earn will be 1,16,600 minus 1 lakh divided by 1 lakh into 100. This is simply using the notion of P1 minus P0 divided by P0 and you need to earn 16.6 percent per annum. So, as I told you, if you want to write down this, you can pause the video and note it down. Else, I will just move ahead. Let us move ahead now. So, after one year, the prices are going to be like this, 1,06,000 for model A and 1,16,600 for model B. 
after one year you have changed your mind and finally planning to buy model a itself for 1 lakh 6000 now this is a twist in the story what is happening after one year you managed to earn i'm assuming this is just my assumption so suppose you managed to earn that 16.6 percent by investing 1 lakh you could finally arrange exactly 1 lakh 16600 so you have enough money to buy model b but suppose you change your mind that why to invest unnecessarily more money and you can manage with model a you have changed your mind and you have decided to buy model a only logically one year back one year back whatever you have considered as price for model a if you would have purchased model a right then and there there was zero cash left over with you to invest so your monetary value of investment would be actually zero but today with the cash flow that you have in hand what is the amount of cash flow that you have in your hand one lakh sixteen thousand six hundred which includes six percent of inflation factor and it also includes 10 percent of real interest rate so the price differential originally between the two models was exactly 10 percent that is one lakh and one lakh ten thousand and now we find that over and above that 10 percent because of inflation whatever surplus money that you have now will be purely on account of the interest that you have earned so let me show you what will be the impact of this decision changing for your cash flows you have 1 lakh 16600 in hand of which you pay rupees 1 lakh 6000 so how much remains in your hand you effectively save 1 lakh 16600 minus 1 lakh 6000 and that is rupees 10600 on buying model a at the beginning for rupees 1 lakh you would not have earned any interest so I am assuming that pausing of video and writing was done already by you. Moving ahead, we would say effectively the rate of return that you have earned is 10,600 by 1 lakh in 200. Simply apply a logic that you have invested 1 lakh in a situation where there was 10% pure interest rate and there was inflation of 6% when you talk about inflation adjusted interest rate effectively you have earned 10600 and that is where you would say that 10.6 percent that you have earned effectively is basically 10 percent plus 6 percent of 10 percent that becomes 10.6 percent when we are dealing with the chapter international financial management where i will be discussing international fisher's effect or simply fisher's theory where the inflation impact on interest rates will be observed that time we will have much more clarity with this particular concept but as a general notion keep this thing in your mind whenever there is inflation adjustment on any interest rate you will never add inflation rate on interest rate directly you will consider the inflation rate affecting the interest rate in the manner we have understood in that particular question that was question number 15 what did we observe that risk free rate was originally given as 9% without inflation 9% will remain 9% but if inflation rate is 2% you will add 2% of 9% on the base rate of 9% that will be 9% plus 0.18% effectively it would become 9.18%.